In this video, I will share some essential tips for those looking to buy their first car here in the UK. Although the public transportation system here in the UK is quite good in some areas, <laughs> you actually need a car to transport yourself for ease and convenience. So whether you have been living in the UK all your life or you're here to study or work or start a new life, I would share some top tips you should consider when you're looking to buy your first car here in the UK. So let's dive right in. The first tip I would give you when you're looking to buy a car here in the UK is to determine your needs. Now to assess what you will be needing from a vehicle, you have to consider the vehicle's primary purpose, whether you're visiting it for family outing, off-road trip, commuting, or etc. Now, you will need a fuel efficient, reliable, and comfortable car for daily commute to work or for school runs. Now, a compact sedan or hatchback with good fuel economy and modern safety features will do. If you require a spacious car with ample seating and cargo capacity for family trips and activities, let's say your family is like an outdoor kind of family, a mid-size SUV or a minivan with flexible seating arrangements would do and you have to have entertainment options and safety features so that it will be stable for children. Additionally, you would also need to select a car size based on the number of passengers and cargo space you require. For instance, a family of five will need a car that can comfortably fit all five people. You cannot buy a car that can only fit two people when your family is a family of five. How would you transport the other people? Now, if you intend to drive long distance or commute regularly, you need to opt for a car with good fuel efficiency to save money on fuel. Furthermore, when you're trying to determine what your requirements in a car would be, you need to evaluate the features you would need in a car by considering the technology features you want the car to have, such as sat nav, that is navigation system, Bluetooth connectivity, Apple Play, and advanced driver assist systems. You would also want to look for features like enhanced comfort, such as adjustable seats, climate control and the interior materials because there are some cars that have interior materials that are hard to maintain. Now you want to consider the interior material because there are some cars that have some interior materials that are hard to clean or can catch stain quickly, let's say in terms of color or in terms of the material used. So for instance, if you have kids, there are some car materials you want to shy away from. You want to go for a car interior that will be easy for you to clean because obviously kids can be messy, they eat in the car, they play in the car and all of that. Likewise, when you're trying to see what you require in a car, you need to assess the practicality of features like foldable rear seats, cargo space and towing capacity. You also want to assess how comfortable is it for you to get in and out of the car. Now my second tip would be to research. After you have determined your car needs, you can begin researching to understand what car meets your needs in the market. You know, start to look at the prices of the car that meets your requirements and also legal requirements of owning a car here in the UK or driving in the UK. You also want to research various models and brands to find the car that meets your needs and budget. Now, when you're doing your research, because it's your first car, you don't want a car that will give you too much headache. You want to look for cars with reputation of reliability and low maintenance cost. Now, you can consult resources like customer reports and JD Power ratings for that. Likewise, you want to check the car safety ratings. Now, when you're doing your research, you also want to do your research on reputable places to buy a car. Here in the UK, you can buy a car from a dealership, auction, or a private seller. Now, dealerships offer more security and often provide warranties, but they can be more expensive. Private sellers might offer better prices, but you need to be cautious about the car's condition and history. You want to ensure that the car is not a stolen car or the car has not been in an accident before or the mileage of the car has not been tampered with. There are websites where you can go check all of this information. Now, regardless of where you're buying your car from, whether you're buying from a car dealership, a private seller or auction, you should always get a vehicle history check using services like 
HPI check or vehicle vertical to ensure the car hasn't been stolen, written off, or has outstanding finance. Now, when you're done with your research, you need to set a realistic budget on how much you want to spend on the car. That's why it's important to do your research so you know all the costs involved, how much your car will cost, and things like that. When you're setting a budget for purchasing a car, it's essential to be thorough and consider all the costs involved. You know, you want to take into account the maximum amount you are comfortable spending on a vehicle, whether you plan to make a cash purchase with your savings or you want to opt for financing. Additionally, you also want to factor in recurring costs such as car insurance, MOT, maintenance, repairs, and forecast as they can significantly impact the overall experience of your car. Because you might be thinking, oh, I'll opt for finance and my monthly payments will be like maybe 400 pounds. But you're only thinking of the amount you'll be paying back to finance the car. We are not thinking about how much the monthly cost of running the car will cost you. So that's why you have to think about the overall cost of the car because it can impact your experience. Because if you don't consider all these costs, it might just turn out that you cannot afford the car in the first place because you did not do your budgeting right. So basically what I'm trying to say is that it is essential to be realistic and consider the long-term financial implication of owning a car to ensure that you can comfortably afford it. My fourth tip is to get your documents ready. Now, when you're buying a car in the UK, you will need to have a few key documents ready. Now, you might need proof of identity that is either a valid passport or a valid biometrics residence permit. You would also need proof of address so you can use your utility bills, your bank statement or your rental agreement. You would also need your driving license. Now, if you just move to the UK, you can actually use the driving license from your home country with the international driving permit and a UK provisional driving license. Now, if you just move to the UK, you can actually use your driving license from your home country to drive in the UK. You will just need to get an international driving permit to support that and a UK provisional driving license. But eventually, you will need to get a full UK driving license after a year. You can only use the international driving permit and the driving license from your home country and the provisional driving license all together for just a year. But you can have the provisional driving license for as long as possible when you're still maybe trying to learn how to drive in the UK. And when you're confident that you can pass your UK driving test, you will just go on DVLA, book your theory test, book your practical test. When you take it and pass, they would give you the full UK driving license. Now, another document that is usually involved in the sale of car here in the UK is something called the V5C. Now, it's the seller's responsibility to provide a V5C registration document, also known as the logbook. Now, after purchasing a car and you receive this document from the person that sold the car to you, that's the seller, you have to ensure that the details on that document are correct. Now, my fifth tip will be around insurance and road tax. Now, when it comes to car insurance, it is mandatory in the UK. So you have to use comparison website to find the best deals. Now for road tax, that is based on your car's CO2 emission and must be paid annually. Now you can check and pay for your road tax through the DVLA website. Now my sixth tip would be on new versus used vehicles. Now when you're planning on purchasing a car, you have to weigh the options between new used and certified pre-owned car that's essential so when i mean used i mean car you're just buying from a private seller nothing to certify it and when i mean certified pre-owned car car that you're buying from a dealership that is um brand authorized so let's say ford will say approved used things like that and brand new car is ochara nobody has given it you are buying it directly from the brand Truth be told, new cars come with advantage of the latest technology, enhanced finance options, like you can buy some new cars in the UK with zero finance, but they are freaking expensive. <laughs> and then they come with warranty, which would give you peace of mind, but they also come with a higher initial cost. On the other hand, used cars are more budget friendly upfront and they require a thorough inspection to ensure that they are free from significant wear and tear. Now, certified pre-owned vehicles can provide a middle ground between new and used cars. 
So they offer more warranty coverage and they have reassurance of thorough inspection and refurbishment. Now we went for a certified pre-owned vehicle, which is typically a used car. But what this just means is that it's a used car that the makers of the car authorize that it can go back into the market and they've done maybe the refurbishment, they've inspected it. It will always come with new MOT and they would always give you like one year warranty or insurance on it for free. Even if it happens to it, you bring it back, they'll repair it. So that's just the adjuster and adjuster and that is in certified pre-owned car. But there are some used cars that are not certified that some dealership have good deals on that you can even return after 14 days of buying a car. So if you buy the car, and after 14 days, you say you don't want this car. They'll collect the car back and give you your money in cash. I think Stone Acre does that. And Stone Acre is like a dealership. And they also have things like extended warranty where they can even extend your warranty for you at a fee for maybe five years or so. So to be fair, certified pre-owned vehicles and used cars are just the same thing. Just that certified pre-owned vehicles is just the maker of the car are certifying it and say, okay, yes, this is slightly as good as new but used car do not have that so that's just the difference basically the seventh tip would be to visit several dealerships and test drive several cars <laughs> now when you're visiting dealerships to test drive cars paying close attention to several key factors is essential you want to focus on the car's overall fuel and handling note how it accelerates brakes and drive on different road surfaces Additionally, the comfort of the driving position, ease of getting in and out of the car and the visibility from the driver's seat should be assessed to ensure that the car feels comfortable and suits your driving needs. Likewise, when you are on a test drive, listen to any unusual sounds from the engine, brake or suspension. Usually how a vehicle sound could indicate potential mechanical issues that may need further inspection. It is also advisable that when you're visiting dealerships, you should test drive multiple cars to accurately compare and find the one that best suits your specific requirements and preferences. You know, doing so will allow you to make well-informed decisions and choose a car that best suits your needs. So on paper, you might have written all your needs and when you enter the car and the car has all your needs, it might not really be what you want. So test drive cars that are either below what you need or above what you need. So you'll be sure that, yeah, this is what you want. You know, you can get the sweet spot of the kind of car you want. Now, number eight tip would be around financing options. Now, when you're considering financing options, it is very important that you thoroughly explore and compare various choices available to you to determine what best fits your financial situation so before going for finance or before taking a loan you want to start by comparing interest rates and terms offered by different lenders such as banks lending society credit union and dealership financing you know you want to carefully assess the details of each offer to make sure that you are making an informed decision you want to look out for manufacturers incentive rebates and special financing offers that could provide valuable benefit to you and help you save. You know, all of this is just so that you can select a financing option that best meets your needs. And you just like carefully consider all the available options and incentives. Like I said earlier in this video, if you are buying new car, the brand you're buying the new car from would usually offer you finance and most times it's usually 0% interest but new cars are expensive. So that means you'll be looking at cars of about 32,000 pounds and above just to get zero finance. But is that worth it for you? Or will it be that taking a loan of maybe 10,000 pounds and paying let's say 5% interest on it and paying it over two years is better for you? Do you get so? You just need to consider all of this. So let me quickly touch on several options on how you can finance a car here in the UK. The first one will be loan. That is getting a personal loan from your bank or from lending society here in the UK or from family and friends. And you just take the money you've borrowed, which is cash and go to the dealership or the private seller and pay them cash and you take your car and go. That's what we did. We took a personal loan from a lender here in the UK and then we pay off the car. 
then we're not paying the lender back with interest over i think two years we took the money for now this worked well for our financial situation like i said you need to consider your financial situation because yeah you can when you get a loan your credit score your debt and your earnings will determine the interest you pay on the money or for how long you can even take the money for so that's why when it comes to financing a car here in the uk it's more like to each their own basically the second option is dealer financing so many dealers here in the uk would offer financing option but the thing with dealer financing is that their rates are not often competitive so they usually used to have high rates the third way to finance a car here in the UK is usually through higher purchase. So what would happen is that you would pay an initial deposit and make monthly payments over a set period. I think for higher purchase, you would typically have to pay 10% of the overall cost of the car, then you're not making monthly payment. So let's say a car costs like £10,000, you would pay £1,000 and then they'll give you the car and then you'll not be paying the remaining money last the nine thousand pounds that is remaining over a cost of maybe nine months maybe you can pay more one thousand every month until you finish paying the car but obviously you will pay with interest basically that's a higher purchase works now the fourth way you can finance a car here in the uk is through pcp so that's personal contract purchase now for pcp pcp would usually offer lower monthly repayments which option to buy the car at the end of the term now, I don't want to go into details of all of these financing options because I want to keep this video short and sweet. I'll make another video going into the nitty gritty details of all of these financing options so that you can outweigh the pros and cons. Now, when it comes to financing a car here in the UK, you want to use websites like Money Supermarket or Compare to Market to find the best financing deals for you. My ninth tip would be about negotiation. Like I always say, there's always room for negotiating and a bargain, no matter what you're buying. If you followed my house buying series on how we bought our house here in the UK, I'm sure you would have noticed that I made a whole video talking about how we negotiated and how to negotiate when you're buying a house here in the UK. Because to be fair, everything and anything is negotiable but the negotiation just have to be favorable on both ends negotiation can never be on one side it has to be a give and take thing so before negotiating for the price of the car you want to use reliable sources such as kelly blue book or ed Nuts to determine the car value you know these tools will make you know the fair market value of the car you are interested in buying or selling which will give you a fair negotiation position now let's say you have a car and you plan on trading in the car for a new one it is vital to also research the value of your car beforehand and the value of the car you want to take like you want to trade your old car for you know evaluating the value beforehand would enable you to ensure that you get a fair deal and provide valuable information to you to help you successfully negotiate so that means you get a fair deal on the car you are trading in and to help you negotiate for a fair deal on the car you are buying now my 10th tip is whether you're buying a used car or a new car you need to inspect it before buying you need to see it physically before buying or you need to have the option of if it's delivered to you and you see it and you don't like it you can return it now, if you're buying a used car, having a trusted mechanic at hand or someone who knows about car to help you inspect the car and identify potential issues is actually very important, especially if you're buying a used car. Now, if you're buying a new car, you can inspect it yourself to ensure that the features you wanted or you chose when you're buying a car and the options are, are specified and they are not damaged or defects. Because if you're buying a new car, you don't have to worry if it has any issue because if it has any slight issue like all you need to do is call the manufacturer and they'll come and take it and repair it and give you a new one so the last but not the least tip i would give you is to review the warranty and understand what the warranty covers and for how long the warranty is for you see knowing what your warranty covers and how long your warranty is for would help you consider whether you need an extended warranty or if paying the extra cost for extended warranty will give you the peace of mind because here in the uk you can actually get extended warranty to extend your warranty basically but you have to pay for it so if your warranty that comes with your car is like five years you don't need extended warranty because extended warranty i think is for five years so but if the warranty that comes with your car is for one year you know you can do extended warranty for four years so yeah so with that said by carefully considering my tips and all these factors i've mentioned in this video 
you can make an informed decision and choose a car that best suits your needs and lifestyle. So there you have it, my top tips for immigrants buying a car in the UK. I hope you find this video helpful. If you have any question or additional tips on buying a car here in the UK or things to consider before you buy a car here in the UK, please drop it in the comment section below. You just might be helping someone who is looking to buy their car here in the UK. In the next video I'll be uploading, I will talk about the cost of owning a car here in the UK just to give those looking to buy their first car here in the UK an idea of the financial responsibility of car ownership. With this, we've come to the end of the video. Bye for now and thanks for watching.